all right, which to me is an achievement for the DC Cinematic Universe because either their movies are amazing or just the hottest garbage ever. Okay, first I'm gonna do no spoilers for people that haven't watched it yet because I understand that I am releasing this video on the first day that it's out or maybe the day after. Sometimes I'm a little slow with editing, but I'm going to start with no spoilers. I will let you know once I get into spoiler territory, just in case you haven't seen this movie yet. I will give you plenty of time once I get to spoilers for the Birds of Prey movie, or as I call it, the Harley Quinn film. So overall, it was a decent movie, which to me was surprising because the trailers looked so bad. It made it look like a movie that I was going to have to drink heavily through, but I actually didn't have to consume any alcohol while watching this movie, so I feel like that's a, a, a plus for it. But maybe I shouldn't have been too surprised because DC Cinematic Universe has been on a roll. I mean, Joker, Aquaman, Wonder Woman, Shazam was decently good. So I feel like they are on a roll and they definitely are getting their footing a lot better and to me generally DC movies just were so bad but they seem to be shifting towards okay we can make a really good movie like Aquaman and we're no longer gonna have train wrecks like Suicide Squad although I think Suicide Squad is so bad that it's actually good but that's not a popular opinion Honestly, for an action movie, and if you're seeing this for superhero action, it's it's pretty bad. The person that did the fight choreography should probably be flogged, which is interesting because I looked him up and he's actually done some really good things like Atomic Blonde and John Wick and Thor. So I don't know how you get somebody that's so good at fight choreography in other movies and then just sucks at it in this one. It just, once I get into spoiler talk, I'll get more into the ridiculousness of some of the fights. It wasn't, oh, this is a superhero movie ridiculous. It was, this is a really bad sequence and this isn't fun at all. And I don't understand how you could drop the ball this hard. <laughs> This movie is rated R, and while yes, R typically means there's nudity and sexual violence, it's mostly just swearing and, and violence and a little bit of gore. Honestly, I'd say this movie was a light R. You don't really see nudity. There is one point in the movie where you think, oh my gosh, you're about to see a whole lot. This is terrible. Not that boobies are terrible. I love boobies. You love boobies. Boobies are fine. Um, men and women boobies. All, all boobies are equal. But it just, it never, there's no sex, there's no boobs, there's no, nothing where people would clutch their pearls, you know? You see fucking cleavage and people lose their minds. I mean, there is plenty of cleavage. Um, Black Canary, her outfit is like a little bralette and her, her boobs bounce quite a bit. But it's not to the point, I think, you'd have to be super, super prudish and a, a super, again, pearl clutcher to find any of that offensive. So I would say this movie's a light R. And I was actually excited with this movie being rated R because I was like, oh shit, this is gonna get intense. We're gonna see lots of gore. There's gonna be this crazy Harley action. And they really didn't go that crazy. I almost feel like the R was just for show. I feel like I've seen video games with more violence. Now here's where I don't know if I'm a hypocrite or just stupid, or maybe I'm a combination of both. I accept that. So I'm not a fan of Deadpool's meta-ness. I just, I have complained about that with both his movies that I don't, the meta gets a little bit too much, which is funny because while watching this movie, I wished Harley would get more meta than she already was, even though she was narrating the freaking movie and at some point she looks right at the camera. So I'm really not sure what's going on with my brain, but I don't like how crazy meta Deadpool is. But I wanted Harley to be more meta. So I I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just a garbage person. Speaking of Harley, I am a little bit disappointed. I feel like they didn't go as far as they should have with her. She really felt restrained 
just it wasn't the same intensity that we saw with her in Suicide Squad. It's almost like they made made her take a step or two back, which I didn't like because I I like the total psycho quirky Harlequin. So I don't know why in this movie it it's weird because she is quirky, she is insane, she is super violent, but somehow less than what we see in Suicide Squad. I guess if we want an in-universe reason, she's hurting really bad from her breakup with Mr. J. By the way, this is a, a Harley dress and it pisses me off because the, the black and red are never fully aligned with, you know, between my boobs and it just gonna bother me editing this video. This is why I don't wear this dress very often anymore. That and it's way too big below the boobs, so it's just... So with Harley being more restrained, I feel like after Suicide Squad, DC definitely took a step back and realized, okay, we tried to be super gritty, people didn't like that. We tried to be super goofy and out there with Suicide Squad, that didn't work. So I feel like they're scared and they're really just trying to go down the middle, which I'm not calling out Marvel Cinematic Universe because obviously it works. They make so much money. They constantly get good ratings, but it's boring. It's boring because they have this formula that works and they do it and they don't take a lot of risks. It's only lately that Marvel has started to be like, well, we established ourselves, so now we can just go fucking crazy. And I feel like DC has gotten burned so much with their movies that they're afraid and they just want to do the middle of the road and that, here's the thing. And again, I'm not doing DC versus M Marvel, but what I liked about DC Cinematic Universe is even when the movies were awful, just absolutely terrible, they did something different. They didn't follow this cookie cutter formula that just was mind numbing and we've seen a million times before. It, it was different and I like that. And I understand that doesn't make them money because then they get bad reviews and people don't go out to the movies and then they can't justify making sequels and stuff. I get it and it sucks. <laughs> I will say as for the Birds of Prey, Black Canary, amazing. You're really going to enjoy her. Huntress, you're going to enjoy her, especially how the actress portrayed her. I absolutely loved it. You'll like Montoya. Cassandra Kane. I don't know, maybe I just don't like younger child actors as much, but I, I don't like how they portrayed her in this movie. So she's kind of eh. Ewan, his black mask. Oh my gosh. He got a little more campy. I wish they would have let him be more campy, but it goes back to them being afraid. But his level of campy was great, and I wish they would have went a few degrees further with that. So yeah, I would say if you like Harley Quinn, if you like DC Comics, if you like the DC Cinematic Universe, or you just like superhero movies, go see this movie. It's decent. It's a, a good film. It's not even a film where you have to turn your brain off just to enjoy it. And I know that's a, a big thing <laughs> in our society. Since there's that meme, we live in a society, every time I say society or think it, I think of that and then I just, I don't know, it makes me laugh. But I know in our society, we like kind of movies where we can turn our brain off and it's just nonstop action. And I appreciate that this movie isn't like that, you could turn your brain off and just enjoy the pretty colors and the fighting, but it, I feel like is a good combination of a movie where you have to pay attention and action in it and involving superheroes and, and bad guys. I think I would rate it higher if it gave me um, some sort of emotional high, which probably sounds really creepy, but generally when I watch movies, there's something in them that resonates with me and gives me kind of this emotional upper. And I never got that with this movie. There was never a point where I was felt inspired or felt moved or it hit me on some emotional level. And that's a bad sign because I'm kind of easy to give an, uh, uh, an emotional upper with movies. So the fact that it didn't is kind of a bad sign. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna go into spoilers. So if you have not seen this movie or you just don't want spoilers, please don't watch after this point. I, 
and super cereal. So if you're sticking around, hopefully you have watched this movie. I would be interested to hear your opinion in the comment section down below. So I think the best part of this movie was the last 30 minutes. If the movie had been like the last 30 minutes, I would have absolutely loved it. I would have given it an eight or nine out of 10. I just, I would have lost my mind with excitement. The last 30 minutes were so good. I feel like they blue balled us by not having the birds of prey come together until the, the last act of the movie. That was fucking cheap and fuck you. I just feel like that's when we got most of the humor, the action, and when we got the Harley that I wish we would have had throughout the entire movie. Margot Robbie as Harley, I know a lot of people say that she is Harley now in their minds, and I completely agree with you. I feel like she has the acting chops and she looks like Harley so much that she can pull it off. But again, going back to, I think they restrained her in this film and I, I just wish she would have been a little more violent, a little more crazy, a little more off the wall. That being said, I mean, she did stomp down on a dude's legs. Whew, that was horrifying to watch, but I just wish they would have gone a little bit more with her, her violence and mayhem. I'm actually disappointed that she didn't kill the Joker. I thought that was how they were gonna get rid of Jared Leto's <laughs> Joker in that universe. They were gonna have her just straight up murder him. And I was really disappointed when it turned out that the trailer actually just blue balled us and they broke up and she didn't kill him because that would have been fabulous. By the way, does anyone wanna see Phoenix's Joker and this Harley meet up? I understand they're on alternate Earths, but it could happen. We could see a flashpoint or something and they could, they could merge and we could see it. And I think it would be the greatest fucking thing ever. Jared Leto was a, a, a bad Joker. I don't know if that's a hot take or whatever, but I feel like Phoenix's Joker with Margot's Harley could be just this off the hook crazy combination. And we're probably never going to see it. And that sucks. I feel like they did a really good job with Harley in keeping some of her elements from the comics, such as uh, Hyena, her being part of the roller derby and stuff like that without being too on the nose, not being too shoving it in our face. Hey, 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 hey. Did you know this is, this is based off of comics? So I think they did a great job of adding those elements without it just being grown worthy. Ewan McGregor as Roman as Black Mask. Oh my gosh, I loved him. I know he was a bit campy in the movie. I wish he would have went campier. I wish he would have went more psychotic. And I know Ewan McGregor could have pulled it off. So again, I think it goes back to DC kind of trying to pull that shit back and not wanting them to go too cheesy, too campy, too over the top. They should have let him. Ewan could have pulled it off and what we saw from him also, Zaz, the guy that played him, did it so per- I was genuinely terrified. So my problem, and if you've watched enough of my reviews, you probably know this or you've been on this channel long enough. I have a hard time being intimidated by actors portraying a character because I usually just see them as the actor trying to be all tough and scary. I was genuinely scared of him, of his character. I was like, oh shit. Uh, I don't know what the fuck this guy is gonna do, and I am scared for everyone around him. That being said, screw you for killing Black Mask and for killing Zaz. No. Although it is kind of weird how easily they died in the end. They didn't make it... Okay, so sometimes I have this complaint where in a, a movie based on the comics... The fights are really drawn out to the point where your eyes start to glaze over. Man of Steel is a really good example of that with uh, Zod. At some point, you're just like, you, you gotta end this action. This, this is, this is too much. This is too much. You're actually hurting my head and I am so bored and I'm gonna go to another place in my head. I'm gonna check out until you're done with this. And they didn't really have that in this movie. Zaz went out pretty quick and Black Mask, him being blown up by a grenade was kind of funny. I laughed. I don't know if that's a good reflection on the type of person I am. 
I also love him getting pissed about Harley and Cassandra talking while he's holding her hostage. Like, really, guys? This, n now this is the time. Journey as Laurel Lance, Black Canary, was so, so good. I was really nervous for her because Black Canary live action iterations have gotten screwed over in the past. And I really worried they weren't going to do her justice. But the actress for her pulled it off amazingly. She just, Black Canary, was so good. I could watch a movie with just her. So, DC Cinematic Universe, a, a Black Canary movie. <laughs> Montoya was also really good. I love her portrayal in this movie and her problem with alcohol and just everything about her. I think the actress did such a good job portraying her. And I would love to also see her in a future movie. Also, that, why are you always talking like you're a cop in an action movie? That bit, I loved. Huntress was also really good, and I love how socially awkward she was. I mean, come on. If you watched your family get killed in front of you as a little kid, and then you grew up being trained to get revenge, You'd be a little awkward. You'd be a little out there. You might laugh at fucked up things that normally you shouldn't laugh at. So I think they did a great job with making her so awkward and just everything about her was just off by a beat. And that's exactly what you would expect out of someone that's dealt with that level of trauma. In a superhero movie, I'm not, not saying if you had trauma, that's the way you should act or that you're socially awkward. I know you're, you have your fingers on your Tumblr posts. Okay, that being said, holy shit, her fight choreography sucked so hard. Actress was amazing. Everything about her playing Huntress was amazing. The action scenes were so bad. If you told me if I were in that movie world that that woman had been training since she was a little girl to get revenge i would have laughed hysterically the fight choreography for her no <laughs> no and not all the fight sequences were bad harley's was pretty good but honestly it's supposed to be a little out there and comical with her swinging around a big hammer and even then there were problems with her fight scenes with people pausing or positioning themselves so she could hit them it was a little obvious i don't know why they sucked with the fighting and you would think with the movie with a villain a bad guy and then some future superheroes they would really want to nail that stuff and again the fight coordinator no excuse, because that guy has done some amazing stuff. Hey, also, is anyone else pissed that they did us dirty by having the Black Canary, her canary cry, only once during this movie? You did us so dirty. How dare you? So overall, while I think the fight sequence in the fun house could have been a lot better, also Cassandra being passed off was really awkward. The one moment that I just laughed my ass off was when Harley all of a sudden had roller skates. <laughs> and Black Canary goes, when did she have time for a shoe change? That sort of humor, the mentioning of something that is ridiculous in a comic book movie and just being like, Whatever. It delights my soul. Harley Quinn with her roller skates on and the chase scene where she is being pulled by the motorcycle being driven by Huntress is the height of absurdity and probably my favorite action sequence scenes in this movie. It was so stupid that it was amazing. And that's what you want from Harley Quinn. You want her on roller skates being pulled by a motorcycle, chasing down a vehicle. That is amazing. That entire sequence was fucking amazing. And I loved it so much, and I, I would watch two hours of that. I do want to bitch really quick about the fact that they didn't have all the ladies come together until the very end of the movie, until the final act. I mentioned this 
I believe in my spoiler free section. Maybe I didn't. I don't remember at this point. I've been talking too long. Uh, I did not like that they didn't get together until the very end, and I kind of felt blue balled with that. It just. It felt like more that this just was the Harley Quinn movie. And then they were setting up these characters for their own Birds of Prey movie. And I think maybe that's what they should have done. They should have been, oh, this is Harley. This is her and continuing on with her story. And we're introducing these other characters so we can set them up in their own movie. I feel like that would have made a lot more sense. By the way, the Birds of Prey, their outfits at the end of this movie, I hated it so much. I hated it. It looks so terrible. I love seeing them work together. Black Canary, Huntress, and Montoya. Their outfits were so bad. No. Also, if I can have a random thought here, which of course I can because this is my channel and I can do whatever the fuck I want. I think the disjointed storytelling helped this film quite a bit. I think if they would have told it in chronological order, it would have made it more of a by the books movie and had made it less entertaining. So I definitely think the jumping around helped quite a bit and I like how they set that up in the beginning of the film with Harley being like this is my story I'm gonna tell it how I want so deal with it so I definitely think the jumping around helped quite a bit I'd be interested to see if this is setting up a Birds of Prey movie if you have any information on that let me know in the comment section down below because I'd be excited to see that also I wonder if we're going to get a uh, Harley movie with her with Cassandra. I would love to see her with Poison Ivy and that whole thing. And also Harley versus Batman. Maybe they kill off Jared's Joker and they get a new one in this universe. Maybe Flashpoint happens and Harley ends up on a different, an alternate Earth. I don't know. I'm, I'm curious to see where they go from this. I have a feeling that Margot Robbie's Harley is so popular that DC is definitely going to keep milking it and they're going to do something with her. I wouldn't be surprised if multiple things with her in the future. I I would bet a lot of money we're going to see her return as Harley in one or more movies in the next five years. So those are my thoughts on the movie. Probably uh, too long <laughs> of thoughts. I'm really sorry. Like I said, I I'd watch it again. I'm not going to give it a stellar review. I don't think it was the best movie ever, but I think it was a pretty good movie that I'd watch again while cleaning my house, having it on in the background. But you let me know in the comment section down below. Like, subscribe, and let me know all your thoughts about this movie. Hey, boys, oh.